Hey, everybody. I am so excited to be working with you, working with you all, learning with you all today. Uh, my name is Jessica Rose, and if we haven't met yet, I'm your instructor for this free web development boot camp that Class Central is helping me run. We're running this whole thing based on the free code camp curriculum, and I really want to stress that you don't have to... Oh, Hello. You don't have to join the boot camp to follow along and you don't have to join the boot camp or watch the streams to benefit from the great stuff the people at Free Code Camp have built. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Some of you may have been with us yesterday. Oh, hey again. If you were with us yesterday, you don't have to attend today unless you want to. We're still going to do the exact same material as yesterday. Yeah. So if you were with us yesterday for that stream, we're going to do the same stuff. I hope it's not too boring for you, but I just want to distress, you don't have to come along twice if you don't want to. Ready to go? So we're going to go to freecodecamp.org all together now. Hey, and if you're just seeing this for the first time, how exciting is this? So Free Code Camp is a whole set of different completely free curriculums intended to teach you these really, really valuable core skills. So I really want to stress that Free Code Camp and this boot camp are two separate things. We're just using their curriculum. They're a nonprofit and they're really, really fantastic people. Um, and if you if you ever wanted to support them, if you've got the cash or after you're a fancy developer and you have tons of money, um, contributing to their nonprofit is a really, really cool thing to do. But this boot camp and free code camp remain completely free. You literally can't pay us. So we're going to come in and we're going to take a look at the curriculum. The get started, it's free is very impressive. So within free code camp, we've got a bunch of different things we could learn, but this boot camp that we're working on together is a web development one. So we're going to be working from the responsive web design certification. We're going to be working over this for the next three months together. But I really want to stress that these live streams and the schedules of the boot camp, they're really, really intended to add extra support. If you miss a live stream, it's not a problem. We'll have the videos available later. If you find these videos aren't valuable for you, don't worry about it. We've also got some forums. So if you signed up at Class Central, you're going to go, go ahead and be able to, um, to follow along and talk to your peers and argue gently and politely about um, what different web development concepts mean. Um, but never feel like you've got to keep to our schedule. If you want to race on ahead and get ahead of the class, go, 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 go. And if you miss a week, or I hope you don't, but if you get hurt or sick or lonely and you, you get sidetracked, that's okay too. These courses and this material is going to be there. You don't have to keep up with us and you don't have to learn with us, but we're so honored that you are. And speaking of being so honored, look, look at there's people all over the world. Hey, from Slovenia. Oh, you know what? I remember Slovenia back from when I could travel. We've got folks joining us from India, from Eastern Canada, very specific. Lots of Brazilians. Hello, my lovelies. Floridians, people from Portland. Somebody, oh, hey, me. I, I sound very American, don't I? I confess I am American, uh, but I'm based in the United Kingdom these days, up in Birmingham, which if you let me get started, I'll fuss at you about how this is, oh, you know, it's the finest city in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is not what y'all have come for. What you've come for is to start learning some HTML and start learning web development. If you want to meet, come with us next week, we'll be streaming our second lesson early, early on Monday and later in the day on Tuesdays, just at the same time. But if you want to come and meet us tomorrow, a couple hours later than our start time now, we're going to have a guest speaker who's joining us. We're going to have uh, Barbara Oakley and I believe Zach Cohen. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And these two guest speakers are getting to give us a really, really fantastic. Oh, uh, Casares. I'm so sorry, Zach. I'm very rude. Sorry, I've got the loudest keyboard in the world as well. 
Uh, and if you want to join us for that optional session, we're going to be talking about how to structure your learning and how you can sort of learn best as a programmer. Uh, I know. Do you know what? I'm such a fan girl. You look, you say, oh, really, Barbara Oakley, right? She's one of my personal heroes, and I am just super, super excited to get an excuse to meet her. Um, and you all will get to hear me just <gasps> try not to freak out in front of one of my heroes. Okay. Let's stop talking about how much we love Barbara, Barbara and Zach, and let's get to work. Mm. It's not going to be deadly serious, stressful work. And if you can't make the session with us tomorrow live, don't worry about it. We'll have that recorded and we'll put all those in a playlist as well. Everything's chill. Everything's fine. We're going to be learning about responsive web design together in this responsive web design certification. And I've had a bunch of questions about the certification. Because if you're doing a boot camp, you definitely want the certificate, right? So I hear again and again, Jess, how do I get my certificate? I got you. I got you. Um, you get your certificate by finishing the, the this curriculum on free code camp. So there's going to be a bunch of assignments. There's going to be four projects that you're going to finish on your own. And when you're done with all of those, Free Code Camp's going to give you your certificate. They're going to do that. And that means if you decide you, well, you know, this boot camp is rubbish, but I quite like Free Code Camp, it means you can still get your certification. You don't have to go through us. We, we've got a really good question right here. And this is actually our first session again, but the second time. Every Monday, we'll do our, our a session, and every Tuesday, we'll do the exact same topic, just at a different time, so different friends from around the world can join us. So if you were here tomorrow, you yes, I forgot how time works. If you were here yesterday, and you're back again today, you don't have to stay unless you really, really want to. But if you were here yesterday, and you're back again today, I'm going to be really mean, and I'm going to demand that you help other people out in the chat. That's cool. So what we're going to learn together throughout this course is HTML, the hypertext markup language. And we're going to learn CSS, cascading style sheets for design. HTML is going to make up the elements, the characters of our web page. And CSS, I like to think of CSS as like a style book. These are the, the rules for cool. And CSS is gonna tell the website, tell your website, how you want things to look. It's gonna help make things beautiful and help make things make a lot of sense. We're gonna do this by building some things together. We're gonna learn build a cat photo app. And if you have a cat, I'm going to beg and plead for you in the chat to tell me the weirdest thing that your cat does because I, I, I'm just a big cat person. But together, we're going to build a cat photo app. We're going to learn about CSS by building a penguin, which sounds very strange. And we're going to learn about accessibility by learning about building a web form. Later on, we'll talk about um, responsive web design. So that means building websites that work on different screen sizes. And that means some of you might be joining us from a phone and your experience is going to feel very different from somebody who's put this on their, their I was going to say on their Xbox, but I don't even know if Xbox does, does web anymore. I'm very old. Um, we've got somebody asking, oh, hey, if I only watch the recorded version, if I don't do the assignments, will I still get the certificate? I'm so sorry you won't, my lovely. You've got to go do the assignments. Otherwise, you don't get a certificate. It's very mean of me, isn't it? So we're going to go ahead and come all the way down and we just want to preview what we're going to be learning together. Let's just take a look at it. Super chill. We're going to learn some basic HTML and HTML5. And you say, yes, because we're, we're chill. We're on a first name basis. You say, yes, what's the difference between HTML and HTML5? I said, conceptually, they're the same thing. So having, talking about an iPhone and an iPhone 6, they're, they're both an iPhone, but one of them is just, I was about to say the newest version, but, but iPhone 6 are, are, they're about eight years old now, aren't they? I'm, I'm behind the times. Um, so HTML5 is just the newest version 
of the programming language HTML. And there's a little bit of debate, and it's not always good-natured debate within technology, like, well, is HTML a programming language? And it's a markup language. So it's a language that sends instructions to your browser. Um, and let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about what a browser is. Because for folks who are just sort of starting to build from the web, this feels really important. So the browser you're using right now is the program that you're using to access the internet. Um, can you go ahead and if you're if you're feeling especially chatty, can you tell me about what browser you're using over in the chat? And the browser could be really common one is Chrome. A lot of people these days are using Firefox. I'm a big Firefox person myself. We've got some brave users in here. Edge. Ah, uh, yeah. Brave, another privacy. Vivaldi. I haven't seen a Vivaldi user in the wild in ages. Opera, fantastic. And these are all really, really good examples. Later on in the course, we're going to talk about how to, to keep in mind that your users are going to be using different kinds of browsers. And what we're going to be talking about is web compatibility. Whoa, what a word. And this is really saying, oh. this is really saying, hey, we respect, as web developers, because as soon as you write your first line of HTML, I'm going to bully you to call your, I'm going to politely encourage you. I'm going to lovingly push you. There we go. Lovingly push you to go ahead and call yourself a web developer as soon as you start writing some, um, as soon as you start writing some HTML. So some people will say HTML isn't a programming language. And I mean, okay, I guess. You can call it a programming language if you want. <laughs> and the same with CSS. A lot of folks are like, well, that's not a programming language. And I don't care. It feels like a programming language to me. Yeah, it's a programming language. After we learn some CSS, we're going to learn some applied visual design. And I am going to be leaning on y'all for so much help because I am a terrible designer. I have bad taste. I have bad, like... Uh, if you look, look at this, we got a designer to help me with with all of the work on this because I would have just made everything pink on pink. I'm shameful. So y'all are going to have to help me a lot through this visual design section. And then we're going to talk about applied accessibility. And I'm really excited for this. And that means that we're going to look at how to build websites that people can use, even if they're using different kinds of assistive technology. And this is so important. <laughs> oh, the design is at, so it's a lovely young man who's, who's works for Class Central and his name is Scott. Scott is a genius and there's no way I'm going to take credit for his good work. Um, so accessibility, I, I like to think about this in terms of you're building for the whole world. If you're building a website and I hope you're going to build a website that you're building something you think is important. It might be for business. It might be for passion. It might be because you've got something you really need to say. But if you're putting it out there for the whole world, you want to make sure the whole world can read it. And some folks, for example, might not be able to use their mouse or might not have a mouse. So making sure that you're making websites that can be navigated using a keyboard can be really important. If you've got uh, people visiting your website who are using screen readers, for example, who don't have full use of vision or it might be vision impaired, they say, well, you know, I'm going to use technology that will read the website out loud to me. We want to make sure that you're not giving them an incomplete website. And then we're going to learn some responsive web design principles, really making sure that your website will fit, not just the accessibility needs of your users, but also the different sizes of screens that people are going to join from are on the web. Then the last couple of things we're going to learn is stuff I'm terrible at it. We're going to learn some CSS Flexbox, which I am extremely bad at, um, which is a sort of a layout method, sort of a conceptual approach to CSS that makes it easier to center elements. Yeah, it'll sort of Ooh, there's an alarm going off. Everything's fine. Um, and then after that, we're going to learn some CSS grid. And grid's a little bit newer than flex, uh, Flexbox. It, 
it is what it sounds like. It lets you build a grid and then fill those out with elements. And the last thing we're going to do, I confess, is going to sound very lazy because the last thing we're going to do, I'm not going to do it all. Oh, heck, heck, heck. I'm going to send you off to do your own homework. And these are the projects that you're going to need to do to get your certification. And you have lots of options here. I'd recommend going ahead and taking a look at these right away just to sort of preview and say, well, what are these going to be like? What, what's going to be going on here? Um, but one thing I really like to encourage learners to do is say, hey, these are these different projects you're going to be working on. It might be really cool after you do some lessons to see what kinds of things you can build out in your tribute page or, oh, hey, when you get to the accessibility section, what kinds of things can you start on in your survey form? So going ahead and beginning to take a look at these projects early on is probably going to be a really good idea. We're feeling all right? If anybody has any questions about the structure of the course, please do fuss at me. If not, I'm going to go all the way back up this page and we're going to get we're going to dive into HTML. How scary and exciting. Look at all these terrifying things we're going to learn together. Shall, let's, shall we start with hello? <laughs> so let's first just, let's, first let's make this a little bigger, right? How's that feeling? Can everybody see okay? Oh, heck. So let's first describe what's going on with what we can see here. Oh, we've got a really fantastic question from Diego. So Diego is really right in pointing out, and I should have pointed out, that this course we're going to be doing together over the next three months doesn't cover JavaScript. And a lot of employers, a lot of jobs in development, want to see JavaScript as part of your experience before you get that first job. Um, right now, we can't promise anything. I'd love to come in in January and do the JavaScript course for you all. But at the moment, that's going to be contingent on whether or not we can find some sponsors to make that happen. So whether or not we're going to be able to do that with you, Free Code Camp does have a JavaScript module. So if we can, we'd love to continue to learn with you socially. Even if we can't, go ahead on your own and do JavaScript. I promise that you'll be fantastic at it. Sorry that... We don't know yet we'd like to is not that satisfying of an answer, is it? So let's look at what's going on on the screen here. I'm a little weird because the my screen is mirrored. So starting way over on this side are our instructions. This is our homework, our assignment. And this is telling us a little bit about what we're going to be working on. And then it's going to tell us what to do. And I love being told what to do. Who doesn't? And then here in the middle, we've got two boxes. This box up top is where we're going to be writing our HTML. This is sort of our code editor. And we're going to talk about code editors with a guest speaker later on. So a text editor or a code editor. You'll hear a lot of things like that. In this tutorial environment, and these kinds of tutorial environments are often called sandboxes because it's gentle and safe like a child playing in a sandbox. Um, this sort of sandbox tutorial environment means that you're code editor and your output whoop, and your output are all in the same place. Whereas in a, a really traditional workflow, these might be a little bit more separate. And we'll learn about that later on. At the moment, let's go ahead and leave that abstracted away. So we've got our assignment, our code editor, where we're going to write our HTML. Under that, we've got some tests. So when stuff goes wrong, these tests will say, hey, 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 this was what went wrong. Or it won't always tell you what. Sometimes it'll be like, hey, 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 something is wrong. And often that's enough, as long as we know something's gone wrong. And then way over in the way over in the corner, we're gonna see our output. So where it says hello, that's like our website. It's showing us what our HTML would look like if this was a website we built. We feel cool? Cool. So Welcome to Free Code Camp HTML Coding Challenge. Ba -bom. These will walk you through web development step by step. How reassuring, how calming. First, we're going to start by building a simple web page using HTML. We can edit code in our code editor, which is this friend right here. And I want to go ahead and start talking about one of the sort of core concepts of HTML. And they, these are sort of two things. 
These are tags and these are elements. So right here where it says opening bracket, H1, closing bracket, hello, opening bracket, slash, H1, closing bracket, all of that together is one HTML element. Let's go ahead and let's break this up. Let's, do, let's, let's surgically, ooh, that sounds gross. Let's, um, what's, what sounds forensic, which is less scary than surgery? Let's scientifically, <laughs> still a bit intimidating, start to pull this apart. So an HTML tag is any, almost anything that sits between these two little babies, right? Oh, you know what? I've got the word analyze instead of surgically examine. That is so much less, less creepy. Thank you so much. Look at this. Y'all are just saving me from myself all day. So an HTML tag is generally going to sit between these opening and closing little, little pointy brackets right here. Pointy bracket being a very technical term, isn't it? And what the tag does is going to be an H1. You say, Jess, come on, we're just starting this. What's it? What's an H1? I got you. The H tags are a heading. And heading here just means super heckin' big text, which is important. So this is going to be bigger than regular text. Let's give you an example. Regular oh, size text. There we go. It takes just a second to show you. And you can see that our H1 is way bigger than that regular size text, right? But the H1, the headings, aren't just bigger than normal text. They're also more important. You say, well, I mean, more important? That's weird. But when we say that they're more important, we mean that if somebody's using a screen reader or assistive technology, they're going to, the screen reader is going to come to these headings and say, oh, I know what this website's about because these headings are telling me this website's about hello. Yeah. Or if I'm a robot, so the way Google or the way uh, DuckDuckGo or the way the Bing, the way a search engine understands the web, is it, this is going to sound menacing, this is going to sound a bit like the Matrix, the way they understand websites is they send little virtual web robots out to look at websites. And when you set a header, oh, you know, this is such a good question. Thank you. What's a screen reader? I'm so sorry that I didn't uh, explain that properly. So a screen reader is a piece of assistive technology that very literally takes the information on a website and reads it out loud. So if a screen reader came to this website, it would say, it would possibly, you know what, let's go ahead and have one of our guests, I'll see if I can get us a guest speaker to give us a screen reader demo because I think that's going to be really valuable for you all. And a screen reader will come here and say, well, I see that this has the heading that says, hey, say hello to HTML elements. I think this is important. And then I see this text. I'm going to read this. And when I say read, I mean out loud in a, in a, in a, in a happy robot voice, we'll say freecodecamp.org slash learn slash responsive web design. And then it'll say, say hello to HTML elements. Welcome to Free Code Camp's HTML. It'll go ahead and it will read the content that's on our web page out loud. And this means that somebody who's got uh, visual impairments, who's not able to see, um, or who just works better hearing something over seeing it, is going to be able to listen to your website instead of looking at it, which is really exciting. Yeah, this was such a good question, and I really appreciate you asking. I'm going to go ahead, and right after this session, I'm going to bully a friend. I'm going to lightly encourage. I'm going to bribe a friend of mine to see if they can give us a demo about screen readers, if that's okay. I think me pretending to be a screen reader is probably a very, very poor approximation. So we're looking at this 
heading element. We're looking at this H1 element, this super important one. Yeah. Oh, 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 look at this. Somebody had the best point. This is such a good idea. You know what? Heading versus regular text is very much like the way we would have a title feels like an H1. If you were writing an essay, maybe, or the title is your H1. And maybe these subsections, the different arguments of your, of your paper would be these subheadings. And do you know what? It's not just H1 for the, the title and H2 for these subheadings. You can have H3 for sub subheadings or H4 for sub 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 headings. Whew. Let's let's take a look at what these look at like real fast before we go on with our homework. So let's try an H2. What do you think an H2 is going to look like? Bigger, smaller, weirder. Oh heck. And one thing you'll notice is as soon as I said H2, our regular size text changed to H2. What do we think might be going on with that? Yeah, this is mysterious. So what's happened is we've created an opening tag. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Wandering. You are absolutely out to help me out. So we've created an opening tag Beautiful. Y'all are absolutely so all day right on this. Oh, how do I? So we've got the opening of a tag, and that's made everything that follows it part of this H2 element. Our H2 element is out of control. There's no closing tag. And a closing tag looks like this. And a closing tag is... It looks the same as an opening tag, but it's got that slash. And whenever you see these, these closing tags, think of the slash as a timeout. Think of this as a referee being like, nope, we're done. We're done. Here's the slash. We're absolutely done. We're not doing this anymore. I don't need any more H2. And let's, let's look at what this looks like. So I say, here's, oh heck, here's, oh, a H2? Here's an H2? No, I, I don't want to. Here's H2. And what do you think is going to happen when I close this H2? So here's my opening bracket. Here's my stop it slash. And as soon as I do that, it turns our regular size text back to the default. Because we've said, here's the opening tag for H2. Start the H2. And then we give it the content in the middle where it says, here's H2. And then say, hey, hey, I want you to stop. We've had enough H2. Here's your opening bracket. Here's your slash. Take it away. Oh, do you know what? I love this. You are so responsible. You try and write the opening and closing tags before adding the content. And you are so reasonable. You're so much more reasonable than I am. I'm going to go ahead and try this. <gasps> oh, Jonathan, look at this fantastic question. Will the code run without a closing tag in something other than a sandbox? And I'm going to do two things with the answer to this question. The first thing I'm going to say is, I want you to go try it. Yeah, so in Notepad or in a text editor, start like a, a test.html file and start playing around with that. You can open it with your browser as a local file, but I will also go ahead and give you a spoiler. It absolutely will. In almost all cases, it'll assume that that's what you want to do. And it'll go ahead and do it most of the time. You all are far too interesting. And these questions are so good. Hang on. Let's actually do our homework so we're not really far behind the, the other class. <sighs> let's get rid of our regular size text, right? We don't need that. Let's get rid of our H2 because we're, we're, we're cheating. We're, we're going ahead. Um, And let's see what this actually wants us to do. So says, this is an HTML element. We got this. We got this. I would say, here's our opening tag where we say, here's our opening bracket. Here's what the tag is. Here's the closing bracket. Or, and here's our closing tag. Oh, heck. What? Oh, oh, oh. How do we add blank characters before the text because they're ignored? I don't think they're ignored. Do you want to test it? So if I put a space before hello, huh? Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah. Those are ignored. Do you know what? This is a really good question, and I'm not sure right now. Should we look it up? How do you add a blank space before text h1 ht? Look at you asking. Oh, heck. Wait, I don't want Google. I was, nothing wrong with Google. I'm just a privacy weirdo, so. Oh, here we go. Here is a, Jesse, this is a non-breaking space. Nice. I never remember this. We, we think we can just go ahead and throw that. You think we can just go ahead and throw that in? Escape characters. Mmm, Teddy language. <laughs> so, um, whenever I, we, I don't know something, and I confess that I don't know things constantly, I'm going to go ahead and come. You can go to Google, you can go to DuckDuckGo, you can go to Bing, you can go to Yahoo, you can go to. I'm very old, so I was about to tell you a bunch of search engines that don't exist anymore. Um, I would say, how do I add a blank space in front of a H1 element? I think one of the hardest things in development is learning how to search for things effectively. And this is maybe how I'd say this. Duck, duck, go. Stop bragging. We know you're good at stuff. A, how do I create a blank space? Do, 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 do. I'm lazy. I picked the first one. Blank space. And we're seeing exactly what. Who was it who gave me this really good complete? Jesse gave me this absolutely correct answer that, that we think the ampersand sign, which is very, very formal, NBSP, and then our semicolon, is a non breaking space. <sighs> you think we could just go ahead and copy this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all are going to have so much homework to do on your own because you are asking incredibly good questions. Do you think that? Oh, hey! Uh, you are asking incredibly good questions and charmingly sidetracking me. Cool. Whenever you want to add a space in front. It sounds weird, but I cannot think of a, a time where you would do this. <laughs> Teddy, I'm just picking on you. Um, you would go ahead and ampersand NVSP and a semicolon. Um, if anybody has a mnemonic device or a memory device for how to remember this, I confess that I've had to look it up now and I will have to look it up every single time I need this for the rest of my life. My brain doesn't want to hold on to it. And my brain's an old lady. I, I let her alone. Oh, we've got folks pointing at stack overflow can be really helpful for this. Um, I really like MDN as a resource as well. And uh, Angel SK points out that this is a non-breaking space, which is a really, really useful distinction. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I've got two lovely assistants helping with the stream today, and they point out that Mozilla's MDN web docs are a great resource about HTML. Full disclosure with biases. <laughs> hey, Joe. Uh, full disclosure with my own biases. Um, I used to work at Mozilla, so I really, really like Mozilla. I really, really like MDN. But... Even outside of liking the team and liking the company, I do genuinely believe they're one of the best resources for HTML out there. Okay. I was about to tell you to stop asking good questions, and that's the opposite of what I want. But I'm going to finish this first assignment or else. I don't know what or else is. So most elements have an opening and closing tag, right? Right. They come all the way down. Opening tags look like this. Two little Pac-Man friends, and then what, what the element, what the tag is in the middle. And then closing tags look like this. Two little ones, uh, opening and closing tag. And then this slash, this timeout, like boop, boop, we are done. <laughs> the only difference between the opening and closing tags is the forward slash after the opening bracket of a closing tag. Whew, that was saying opening and closing several times, wasn't it, my loves? So the way that these assignments work, 
our will change our code up here. And then we can say, run our tests. And that'll tell us if we pass. And if we pass, we'll get this like, ba -bom, like little alert thing that'll feel really good. But if it doesn't pass, we can see what's wrong with it down here in this bottom square in our test output. If we, and trust me, if anybody can mess this up, I can mess this up. If we make a huge mess, if we make a terrible mess with all our code, and it's just the worst thing ever, we can reset it. Nothing here is ever going to go so wrong that we're stuck. Yeah, everything is forgivable. And later on in the course, I'm going to try and get one of our optional speakers on Wednesdays to come and talk to us about the idea of version control. And version control, just to preview it, is this concept that you want to be able to have a reset. You want to have a save button and to be able to go back to the last time your code worked or the last time you loved your code, which for me is, I, I suppose, um, the last time I loved the HTML I wrote was maybe around 1997. Um, right now we're all on stream, so we can all learn together, and this is really chill. And if those of you who are enrolled in the boot camp, if you get stuck, you can head over to our forums and be like, hey, help, 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 who knows how to do this? And beautiful, helpful people will come and help you. But also, if you're doing your homework on your own, which you better be doing your homework on your own, if you're doing your assignments on your own, you can click on this get help, and this can give us a hint, ooh, It'll let us watch a video or it can let you ask for help in their system. So even if you're working on this on your own, even if you miss weeks and weeks of, of live streams, there's still places right here within Free Code Camp to get the help you need. <sighs> this is the very first assignment and I've just been chattering on and on and on about browsers and web search and foolishness. And really, our homework, our assignment here is to change where it says hello to hello world. And this is traditional. The idea of hello world is, and do you know what? Tech and programming are super weird. Tech and programming have all of these traditions that are just traditions. Um, and we'll talk about some of them a little bit later on. We'll say, oh, here's lorem ipsum. This is a placeholder text that's just traditional, just because. Um, and the idea of hello world in a programming language is traditional. And it's something that a lot of people like to do when they're learning a new technology. And they say, hey, the first thing you should try and make do with this new programming language is just make it present the text. Hello world. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, hello. I th mm -mm -mm. I'm cheating. Where are we going to put world? Yeah. Go ahead and in the chat. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to be super lazy. Can you, if if, if it's not me being mean, um, can you go ahead and give me the entire element for what Hello World should look like? So including the open in brackets and the H1, tell me what all of it should look like. While you do that, I'm going to grab some water. Um, we've got a good question from somebody saying, hey, I'm learning Python. Um, should I enroll in this boot camp? Norma, it's really about what works best for you. Um, you can absolutely learn this alongside Python. It's not, it shouldn't hurt you. <laughs> um, but it's really about what suits you best. You're so welcome to drop in. You're so welcome to drop out at any time. Just go ahead and prioritize what works best for you. Oh, look at this. Everyone is right as heck. Look at this. Hello world. Hello world. Hello world. Hello world. Hello, world. I am going to, having bullied you and, and faffed around and made you do my homework, I'm going to type that in. I think I can click this button that says run all tests, and I think I'm going to run it, and oh, I am 4% complete with all of HTML. And one thing you'll notice very early is I love to, I'm, I'm, I'm a mean person, I'm going to tell you what to do all the time, and I love to lie, and I, I'm afraid I'm lying here. This course is not all of the HTML you're ever going to need. You're going to be sort of a lifelong learner where you're going to be, you saw, you saw me have to look up, how do I do a non-breaking space? Ooh, Christopher, I think you can also accomplish a blank space using, C oh, you can, yeah, with, the, with setting some CSS rules in a class. You're absolutely correct and I appreciate it.
So where are we going? So we're 4% complete, not with HTML forever, but we're 4% complete with this HTML course. We'll push control enter. And I, I've got the loudest keyboard on the planet. Listen to this. Um, and then nice, because you're all web developers now. Um, being a web developer means you can have the loudest keyboard that you want if you want it. I, I don't make the rules. Those are the rules. So we've already previewed that these H's are headlines. And we talked a little bit about how this H1 is often used, and I think most often used, to, um, to show the title of a page. And we had somebody who was so, so helpful who pointed out, oh, wow, is H1 like a title and H2 like these subheadings? And I think that's exactly how I would frame this. And do you know what is so helpful? Is I think Free Code Camp here is agreeing with us. The H2, I don't know, I don't know why my, my Free Code Camp voice is, is, a, is a weird, the H2 element you'll be adding in this step will add a level two heading to the subpage. So like a, a subheading. And here, this, this element tells the browser and the structure of your website. H1 elements are usually used for main headings. Yeah, like the title, we're cool. Whereas H2 could be subheadings. And H3 would be sub subheadings. And H4 would be, y'all y- 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 get it. Oh, fab. So a key or cut, we talked about this a little bit. Um, so the difference between HTML and HTML5 is HTML5 is just the newest version of HTML. So it's like um, having an iPhone and having an iPhone 7. You say, okay, well, they're both iPhones. Someone help me. What is the newest version of iPhone? It's not 7, is it? I'm so old. Uh, <laughs> it's like iPhone 47 or some foolishness. It's 12. There's 12 iPhones out now. No. No, I, I mean, I believe y'all, but I sort of don't believe y'all. 12, <laughs> iPhone, this is what it feels like, iPhone 52. So really HTML5 is the newest, flashiest version of HTML. <laughs> the same. Oh God, you, I'm getting sidetracked. Y'all are too interesting. We're making an H2 element or else. Mm, I'm not sure what or else would be. That sounds very menacing, I hope. So we're going to make an H2. Oh, let's come down to our assignment. Create an H2 tag that says cat photo app to create a second HTML element before, below, before, below, below. Our hello world H1 element. So we're going to start our opening brace. H2. And now we've, here it says cat photo app. And do you know what? I'm going to do a programmer's favorite thing. I'm going to copy using control C. I'm going to paste using control V because not all programmers, but I am very, very lazy. Let's come down and look at what our assignments are. So here, oh, we've got a question. Can HTML be used for developing mobile uh, web games? I think HTML is often going to be used in making games for your browser. Um, there's some other ways to do it. There's some 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 really weird, cool things to do with like all JavaScript or like all Python using Anvil works. But I think, yeah, HTML is a really good foundation if you're looking for anything that's going to be on the web. So let's look at what our assignment is. We should create an H2 element. Did that. Our H2 element should have a closing tag. We did that. Our H2 element should have the text cat photo app. And you know what? It stresses me out a little bit that there's no space here, but that's what they asked for. Our H1 element should still be here and say, hello world. And our H1 element should be before our H2 element. We're going to come all the way back up to the top. I'm going to push run all tests. And I think we're going to be 8%, 7, 7% close. (laughs) Oh, do you know what? Someone is making the most fantastic point. Headings are so cool. And this is a really, really fantastic point. Don't select level headings based on their appearance. And we're going to learn about that in CSS. You can change the appearance using CSS. And and that's really how we're going to set styles. Select the appropriate header rank in your hierarchy. And this is, I think this is poetic. I love this to say, hey, when you're choosing an H1 or an H2 or an H3 or an H4. This is really about 
the hierarchy of your information, what's the most important thing? What's the, the medium important thing? Um, oh, you such a good point. We talked about assistive tech like screen readers earlier. We're to be talking about it more later on. Heading hierarchy is really, really important. It helps show what's more or less important and let your user navigate. Yeah. Joe, perpetually correct, says you see us has to change the styling and I am not going to agree with that. Oh, heck, sorry. So I think we can run all tests. We're free. And we're going to go on to the next challenge. We're gonna... So we talked earlier about regular size. Ah. We talked earlier about regular size text, right? And this regular text is going to look the same as using the paragraph element because I think, I'm reasonably sure, that the default for text on the page is paragraph as an element. Important, you want to tell a browser, hey, I'm going to be giving you some text. And earlier, you know what, there's so many of you and you're all so chatty and all so good. I confess, I don't remember who gave me this good suggestion. But this is... A really, really good. So we're going to go ahead and open and close our tags right here before we put our content in. So we've got an example of what a paragraph element looks like. We've got our opening paragraph tag. We've got the content. I'm a P tag that sits inside it. And then we've got our closing P tag here. I cheated and I did a little bit of the homework before the homework came through. And here it said, Ooh, do you know what? I'm getting, I'm so excited for this. You, you say, Jess, why should I use a paragraph element if I can write text without using paragraph element? And there's a couple different things. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely charming. So this is really important for a lot of reasons. People using assistive readers, uh, assistive technology like screen readers still need this. Be able to say, hey, screen reader, hey, assistive tech, here's where a paragraph is. Here's what to expect. But also, it's going to make it a lot easier for browsers to quickly read and understand what's going on. It's also best practices. You say, Jess, what's best practices? And best practices are a whole bunch of habits. Think about best practices as sort of formal good manners for web development or really any kind of development. And this is to say, hey, these are the commonly accepted conventions about how we write HTML, even if it'll sometimes work if we screw up. So say, well, I can probably get away with writing this text without a P tag, but I'm going to do this as a paragraph element because it's best practices, because it's sort of good manners on the web. And this can be really important because it's really rare for just one person to work on a website. Oh, we've got a bunch of people jumping way ahead and lovingly showing us exactly how that's going to look. So we're going to come down and create this P element. And y'all have been showing me how to do this and say, hello. Oh, I didn't copy and paste. And can I spell paragraph? G -I -P. paragraph. Sorry, there's nothing worse than having to having. You see how easy my life is where I'm like, there's nothing worse than typing when people can see you. I need real problems. Oh, Fab, Joe's pointing out, hey, Joe, you know what? I'm such a, such a meanie. I might, I might try and get you on here and, and share a stream sometime if it's not rubbish. Um, Accessibility is a really good reason. Floating text might not get picked up at all, or it might get thrown someplace heckin' weird. Oh, yeah, and we're we're going to need that P tag if we're going to style it using CSS. Just, uh, just it, Justy? I'm so sorry. I'm rubbish with names. I was making such a fantastic point. Uh, I'm so sorry that I'm going to put a question up here that I'm not actually going to answer. So how does a browser understand HTML tags is a reasonably complex question. And I'm going to grab a pen if that's okay. And I'm going to make a note that I would, hang on, hang on, um, ask for a speaker to talk about how browsers work. 
I think that would be really useful for you all to see if I can get a guest speaker to come and talk about how a browser actually works, how, how they read HTML. I love this question. I'm so sorry I'm not going to go into it right now, just because we're... You, you love how I'm making a good thing sound like a bad thing, but like y'all are asking so many good questions that we're terribly behind. <laughs> so Joe is suggesting, Joe is saying, hey, we should get Bruce to come and talk about accessibility. The Bruce we're talking about is Bruce Lawson. Um, so you may remember that this Wednesday, we're going to have Zach and Barbara come and talk to us about the neuroscience of learning and how to learn a fesh, a Oh, there we go. <laughs> Effectively as a programmer. But next Wednesday, which is the first, the first of September, Bruce Lawson is going to come talk to us about HTML5 and sort of the, the beautiful embedded psychology of the web. Oh, I, I love this when you're like, oh, you should do you should do this. And be like, ha, I've already done it. Everything's fine. Yeah. Oh, cool. Understanding the internet and the World Wide Web and their difference. The session with Bruce is going to be such a good fit for you. So do you know what? We might run this session a little bit longer than y'all can head out when you want to, but I want to try and make sure that we get you all at least to the same part where we get the other class, the other class, the other session. So we talked about the weird, weird habits, the like, because the web is, it's the web. How old is the web? How old is the web, y'all? Does somebody want to look it up? Is it's it's not thirty years old, is it? It's it's older than thirty years old, isn't it? The web is heckin' old. There we are. <laughs> the web is the web is just about as old as my knees. Um, <laughs> but the web has been around for a while. Oh, Joe, 1980, 1980, 1989, 1983. Oh, we've got, we, oh, we'd be like, oh, do we mean, we, hold on. <laughs> so do we mean when it became publicly accessible? Do we mean when it, when it started as a, as a CERN project? The web is older than most of you attending. There we are. Um, and in all of this time, hey, ooh, Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in 1989. <laughs> 33. Whew, it just occurred to me that I have a pair of sneakers that are older than the web and I need to I need to to sort of emotionally sit with that a minute. Just um having a, a little bit of a, a difficult time having to conceptually see the outline of my own death for a moment here. Um, but so the web is 30 summit years old. And in this time, it's developed a lot of weird traditions and one tradition is lorem ipsum text. And lorem ipsum is a placeholder text. So this is just text you use when you don't know what text is going to go on your website yet. And you say, I mean, Jess, it's my website. How would I not know what's going on my website? How weird. And I was like, hold on. If you're working on a website with a team and you say, oh, our marketing team or our research team is going to give you the, the text for this page, but they haven't yet, you don't get to just go on break until they give it to you, you should probably go ahead and build that website. And this Lauren Ibsen, which is a piece of Latin text that I've tried to look into the history of it, but it feels a little bit random that it's a piece of Latin text from Cicero. And somebody's like, hey, when we don't know what kind of text to use on the web, we use Lauren Ibsen, which is weird, but okay. We're getting kitty ipsum here. So this isn't the traditional lore ipsum we would use, but this says, hey, here's some placeholder text about kitties, which makes about as much sense as using Cicero, I think. And here it says, kitty ipsum delore sit amet, shed everywhere, shed everywhere, stretching, attack your ankles, chase the red dot, hairball run, catnip, eat the grass, sniff. Oh gosh, and this is such a good point. Of course, Laura Mipson is so much older than the web. So this is a um, an excerpt from Cicero, who is, uh, and this is a very good understatement, a very, very, very oldie timey dead dude. <laughs> so thousands and thousands of years back. This Kitty Ipsum, much newer, I think. 
And we're going to, we've been instructed to replace the text in our P element with this kitty Ipsum. And we could type all of this out, but we've already talked about how gloriously, unashamedly lazy I am. So I've hit control C. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to write control V. And one thing we want to be really careful of when we're cutting and pasting is that our opening tag is still okay. Cool, 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 cool. Is our closing tag still okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to check our homework. P element should say kitty ipsum. I think we can say run all tests. And everything remains gloriously, beautifully technicolor fine. Ooh, this. We, we want to chill and talk about this for a minute. Because we're talking about comments. And comments are a way that you can put something in HTML. Um, and I'm going to preview a concept that we're going to talk about later because it's a little bit weird. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just laughing at everybody saying hello and being lovely in the chat. Um, that comments are a way that you can say something too. You can leave a comment for your future self. You can leave a comment for other people who are going to work on this web page later. Some big tech companies like to be really clever and they say, oh, if you're reading this comment, apply for a job. And that's something we really want to point out. So if you comment, put a comment in some HTML, your web browser or your user's web browser isn't going to display that. So you can do it to leave a note for your future self, but also you can use it to ask the browser to ignore something. So if you say, you know what? My HTML is doing a weird thing. I want to focus only on a small piece of this HTML. I'm going to comment out. And this means I'm going to ask my browser to ignore this section by putting it as a comment. So the format for a comment is a little bit different. We've learned that tags have like two little Pac-Man friends, right? But this one, a comment, let's go ahead and let's start a different comment up here. Our comment starts with the op opening tag that we'd expect, but then it's got an exclamation point. How exciting. And then we've got these two, ooh, it's all gone away again. And here we're gonna say here, is a comment. Oh, good, Christopher, you make such a fantastic point. And this is exactly what we're, oh, heck, <laughs> we were all clicking on how much we love this at the same time. Um, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want you to be doing with comments, that you don't want to delete things and try and put about the danger, that's danger. But this will go ahead and let you test it out and say, hey, I want, I want to take this away. I want you to ignore this, but leave it there. Oh, we've got a quick question saying, hey, are these, these sessions, these sessions are absolutely watchable later. They're totally fine. If you're signed up to the bootcamp, if you're not, it's on classcentral.com. Um, if you're signed up to the bootcamp, we'll post all of these to the, <laughs> thank you very much to my lovely assistants. Uh, that's not fair. They're not my assistants. They're, they're my beloved colleagues. Um, you go to classcentral.com. These are going to be posted. The videos will be posted to the forums, or you can head over to Class Central on YouTube and they'll be saved there. Or you can come and hang out with me on Twitch. It's really wherever suits you best. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? Here's another really, really good point. Laura Mipson's just meaningless text. So we can focus on the layout and the design of websites or papers. Y'all are so good at this and I really appreciate it. So let's look at the, the context of a comment. And if it's not distracting, I'm going to take all the rest of this far, far away. So comments start with a starting open tag, an exclamation, oh heck, oh heck. <laughs> an exclamation point and these two dashes. And then they end with two dashes and a closing tag. And this feels very, very different than the way we've been looking at elements before and the way we've been looking at tags before. And yeah, oh, thank you. You all are fantastic. You're just so helpful. Um, I, I 
like to think about web development. I like to think of HTML like a human language. Um, and unfortunately, human languages are super weird. When you think about verbs, when you think about doing words, there's usually a normal way to conjugate them. But there's irregular verbs as well, like things that just don't make a lot of sense. And comments in HTML, I think about those as sort of the irregular, one of the irregular verbs of HTML. Here's a really good question before we go on. Which editor do we recommend for this class? So throughout this class, we're going to be working within this sandbox tutorial environment. So you can use no editor at all. You can just go ahead and work with us in browser. But when it's you're ready to go ahead and use your own text editor, and we'll talk about those later on in the session, when, later on in the, in the, in the boot camp, you can really use whatever you want. I'm not fussy. It's all about what works best for you. If you've never heard of a text editor before, it's cool. It's all cool. We're not going to use them for the majority of the course. And later on, we'll go ahead and have somebody talk to us about them. Yeah. Actually, let me let me make a note now. If y'all keep making good suggestions about guest topics, we're going to run out of Wednesdays before we run out of guests. So... We've learned about the format of comment. Let's go ahead and bring this all the way back up. Woof! And look at this. Someone who was just absolutely brilliant and fantastic uh, <laughs> made the really, really functional point that commenting is a convenient way to make code inactive without deleting it. You say, browser, I'm working on something. Everything's a little weird right now. Just, just ignore this. Put this in timeout, and I'll come get it later. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncomment. So we're going to get rid of these comments for H1, H2, and P. I think, what do we, H1 should be visible. H2 should be visible. And P element, oh, this is such a good point. P element should be visible. And no trailing comment tag should be visible. This is such a good, because like, if we come up here and I delete this, technically, I mean, not very well. Technically, I, I've done with this asked. I, I've uncommented it. But this little this little abandoned afterthought of the comment still exists. I think, so we've uncommented it. We've made this HTML active again. I think we can run all tests. My beloved learners, we are almost 20% of the way done. Let's, let's, let's hustle on. Let's keep going. So we're going to do this a little bit different. We've learned how to uncomment it. Now, yeah. Uh, ben, you're asking if we're going to finish it all. What, what, um, could, you, could you let me know what you mean by that question in a little bit more detail? Do you mean like all of HTML? Um, definitely not. We're going to aim to get about to the point where we're, we're looking at links. And I think that's about 30% done-ish. Um, if we don't get there, it's no problem. We're probably not going <laughs> to, no, no worries. We're probably not always going to cover all of the material in the live sessions. Some of this, because I'm a meanie, y'all are going to have to do on your own. Um, but the forums are there. We'll help you out. And we can go ahead and ask questions in the next one. Claire is asking, how long are these live sessions? So these are going to be about two hours. We do one of them Mondays reasonably early. And then we do this one at this time. But Monday and Tuesday are the exact same material, just different lovely learners. Um, the videos are always available offline. And then we've got guest sessions talking about like super interesting stuff from experts on Wednesdays. Um, if I can get one of my beloved assistants to drop a link to the um, drop a link to the events page, that'll go ahead and have the timings for all the lessons. Ooh, Jinx is saying, "Oh, you know, I'm stuck at radio buttons, and we're not at radio buttons yet, but we'll we'll, we'll get you on." Or don't forget that you can use this. Hang on, you can use this get help button. Don't you just wait for us to unstick you? Like definitely poke around and fuss at us in the forums as well, and we'll see if we can unstick you. Okay, y'all are too interesting. He's sidetracking me. Our H1 element should be commented out so that it's not visible on the page. Already done. But our H2 element shouldn't 
be commented out. So it should be visible. And our P element should be commented out. So it's not visible. So <clears throat> I got, oh, look at you. Are you sure? So we've got somebody suggesting we're going to only comment the H2. I think it might mean the reverse. Yeah. So I think what this saying is, hey, don't show me the H1. Do show me the H2. Don't show me the paragraph. I think I've got a real lazy way to do this. And of course, you all are very good programmers. You're not lazy. I think I'm going to leave this exactly like it is. Cool. And we're going to question about will the guest sessions be recorded? All of the guest sessions are always recorded. Yeah, y'all are busy. We're never going to make you turn up every And nobody is ever, ever going to take attendance. There's none of that. So I want this commented out. And I want this commented out. I'm going to go ahead and just use the comment tags I have already. I'm going to close this one. <laughs> and as a deeply lazy person, I've gotten rid of Hello World. And I want, I want the H2 to stay. H21 should not be commented so that it is visible. So I think if I want the P to go away, I've already got this closing comment here. I think maybe gently, happily, maybe if I run all tests, <sighs> everything is fine. Everything is going to continue to be fine. Ooh, I told you all that I'm a liar. Ooh, Ben, we could have also moved the H2 out of the comment part. Hmm. You are absolutely technically correct. And technically correct is the best kind of correct. So earlier I lied to you and I said, oh, a programmer's favorite thing to do is copy and paste. But that's a programmer's second favorite thing to do. A programmer's actual favorite thing to do is delete stuff. Like think about the power. Think about the raw power where you say, ha, 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 I am the evil princess of my HTML code. And I, I can go ahead and I can say, no, no, you're gone. You're, you're deleted. I, I want no more of you. You're banished from my kingdom. So in this example, we think our user is going to be on a phone that doesn't have a lot of vertical space. And, and that means like a, a phone that's not very tall. And I know that phones today are just real, real big. And then someone was telling me iPhone 12 is, and I, I imagine iPhone 12 is just the size of a paddle. Um, but in this example, we think our users are on a phone that doesn't have a lot of vertical space. It's not super heckin' big. It's not a paddle. So we're going to get rid of the stuff we don't need. And that means removing unnecessary HTML elements. And remember the tags are the are parts of elements, so they do do h1 and then the content and then the do do h2. Oh, do you know what? Here's such a good question. Is there a good way to save your work on free code camp? You've started and you're on it, but it hasn't saved much of your progress. Try pushing control or command and s to make sure that this is being saved to your local storage. Um, so when you click run all tests, if your assignment is correct, it should send you to the next one and save your progress. But if you want to make sure that it's saving what you've written to your local storage, control S or command S is often going to be really good for that. We're all right? All right. Where am I going? We are going to banish our H1 element. Oh, do you know what? Look, look at this. All of y'all are already much better programmers than me. So say, do you know what? The fastest kind of code to run is no code which is both, again, the best type of correct, technically correct, um, <laughs> but no code at all can be quite challenging. I am going to highlight all of this. I am going to brutally and savagely just press delete because I'm a monster. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up my H2 just, just up to line one just because I want to go ahead and keep, I don't need that extra white space, best practices and all that. I'm going to run all tests. Are we going to run all tests? <sighs> we are a quarter of the way through. 
not all of the HTML we'll ever have to learn, but a lot of the HTML we're going to need for this course. Hang on. So HTML5, you all have asked these fantastic questions. Um, Queen, my lovely, it sounds like you're having some problems with Free Code Camp. Can you go ahead and post to either our form or the Free Code Camp form? And we'll go ahead and see if we can't get you a little bit more extra support. I want to make sure that we're we're not ignoring that you're having a problem. Um, oh, thank you so much, my 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 fantastic colleagues putting that up there for me. But go ahead and throw that up there on the forum and we'll go ahead and make sure that we're supporting you. So HTML5, the newest, flashiest version of HTML, came out with a bunch of new tags, which is, I suppose, the equivalent of somebody who is more up to date with technology than I am. Does the iPhone 12, apparently, does it have like... This is, it's, it's got a bunch of flashy new features, right? Like it does, I, I'm on an iPhone 6, like it does fancy things. So every time there's a new release of new technology, you get new fancy things. Um, and HTML5 introduced these new tags, which include main, header, footer, nav, video, article, and section. And I really like these tags because they tell you a lot about what's going on here. And these tags are giving descriptive structure. I wanna, I wanna slowly meditate on this phrase for a minute. And I wanna meditate on this phrase because I wanna grab some water and because it's important. Descriptive structure, here we're describing what the structure of our HTML document is. And I want to talk a little bit about documents because conceptually, you say, well, what do you mean a document, Jess? What, this is a web page. This isn't a... When, and I hate to speak for someone else, when Tim Berners... Oh, do you know what? Hey, we've got somebody who's saying, hey, Jess, what happens if we, we, what happens if we mess this up? Let's well, say run the test. So we haven't done any of our homework. And we're going to run the tests. And it says, come on, y'all. You should have two paragraph elements. Your first paragraph element should have this. And you should have a main. It's just going ahead and telling us which of these tests didn't pass. So it won't give us the ba -bum, good job, but it will give us this test coverage, the test sort of response saying, hey, these are the things you don't have done yet. And we've got them graphically represented right here as well. I love this question and I really appreciate it. So we'll talk about this a little more, but here we're in a, we're in a tutorial environment. We're in a sandbox, but when you write HTML for websites, um, what you're doing is you're really creating a file. Um, and really usually for most websites, many different files, multiple documents. And if you have used a computer where you created a text document, so that might be a, um, final exam dot docx or that might be a phone numbers dot txt or that might be a um oh gosh what a, a resume dot uh, pdf or a cv dot um odf is it odf for open document format but you've got all of these different files for these different kinds of documents you might want to make and HTML, when you write it for a web page, is going to be a HTML file. So every one of these is going to be an individual document for a separate page. Generally, there are exceptions. And what you're going to do is say, I'm going to write this HTML file. I'm going to save it. And the web, the World Wide Web, what, a, what an interesting and exciting. When you think about these HTML files as documents, what we're really talking about with the web is a bunch of a bunch of documents that link to each other. They're just a bunch of documents that can talk to each other and point at each other that do increasingly exciting magical things. Oh, we've got a really good question saying, hey, when we're finished with our course, can we go back to free code camp and see it again? Of course, my lovely, your progress on free code camp isn't going to go away. And 
even if you want to go on and do the JavaScript course, or they've just got a really good data science course, they're going to go ahead and save your progress in, in the course you've already done together. Yeah, it's over there. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So that's really what we mean about hypertext, HTML's hypertext markup language. And really, I love to think about it in, in the context of documents, that these are all files. These are all documents. These are all beautiful pieces of paper, digital paper, that exist in some kind of magical international borderless library. I won't bore you too much, but for me, the, the idea of this limitless sea of documents crashing into each other and intersecting is just so exciting to me. So these new descriptive tags help let you structure and say, hey, I'm making a document. I'm making an HTML file. I want to let you know what the main part of this is. I want to describe what's going on in this section of HTML. And I bet some of you can guess what some of these are going to be. I say, oh, you know what? If I use the header element, I'm probably going to use that to encapsulate what the header of my website is. If you're looking at this website in Twitch, hey, then the header in Twitch will say it's where it's following and browse and um, there's like a little search bar up there. Um, and if you're looking at, if you're, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, hey, my loves, um, it'll be like um, somebody who's watching on YouTube. What does it say at the top on the header? Um, but these are really the, the ability to sort of map out the architecture of your HTML. So let's learn how to do this together. And one thing I think is really conceptually challenging, this is going to be a little bit hard. And I'm talking a bunch of philosophy to y'all. I say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to think about web pages and think about HTML as documents floating out in a mystic sea. Woof, Jess, that's a bit esoteric. And I'm going to make it even worse because now I'm going to come back and talk to you about elements. But I also want to talk to you about children and parents and children and happy families. Oh, Fab, if you are watching this on YouTube, you'll see like a, the logo and the search and the upload and I'm doing it backwards uh, up in the header. So really that use the header of YouTube shows what's going to be in that head section. Okay, back to this. I want to talk to you about families and HTML elements. And really, when we're looking at the main element, we're talking about the main element as a parent element. So this is the top level element, the most sort of bold not not stylistically, but the most shouty type of element we can get. It's the, when we talked about like H1, H2, this would be the H1. So it's like the main idea of this section. It's the parent. And in this example, we've got a main, which is the parent element, the top level. Sitting within it, the little sub elements, the children, are this H1 that says hello world. And this P that says hello paragraph. I'm going to cheat for a second and I'm going to copy and paste this. Go, go away, go away. Because I want to just say this looks exactly like it did before. Having, having it say main hasn't really changed the appearance. But if I was using assistive technology or if I was just really wanted the structure to feel really good on this, somebody coming to the website would be like, oh, hey. This is the main part of the website. This is, this is where stuff's really going on. And then within that, we've got our two child elements, Hello World and Hello Paragraph. Later on, when we talk about CSS, we're going to start talking about the concept of inheritance, um, which is, is a bit morbid, isn't it? But like, oh, here's a parent element and child elements. And inheritance sounds a bit like somebody is going, going to, to not be around anymore. But that's, that's going to be conceptually, hopefully, something we're, we're going to continue to add to the idea of top level and then child elements or child classes later on. We're going to talk a lot more about these new HTML tags in our applied accessibility session. And I confess that's the one I'm the most excited for. But the first thing we're going to do here, oh, 
Sammy, you can technically do div instead of main, but if you do that, I'll yell at you. <laughs> There's other reasons besides I'll yell at you. So it's better for assistive technology. It's better for accessibility for you to go ahead and use the the semantic. Semantic here just means like the the grant the appropriate grammar. Um, wherever possible, if there is an article element and you're doing article, do an article. Don't don't. And div is a type of element which just means here's a thing. It's really tempting to just say div 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 and put all of your stuff in divs. Um, but you all are going to be amazing web developers and you won't do that because you know, it makes your websites less accessible. And because I would be very, dis I would be a little disappointed in y'all. Um, yeah. HTML make content readable by marking the contents with tags. So, so this extra semantic meaning really makes it easier. Sammy, I feel like I'm picking on you. I should add that um, this is super common. So divs are just empty boxes that you can put uh, as elements in your HTML. And we'll, we'll come to them in a little bit. Um, and it's really tempting and it's super common. I've seen high paid, fancy, highfalutin web developers who are like, all of these are divs. But you all aren't going to do that because you are so much better than all of these fancy folks. Right? Right. Coming into the homework, we are going to create a second paragraph element. Opening tag, P, closing tag. And because we've got the great advice to close our tags when we first write them, we're going to do that. And our second P element is saying, hey, copy and paste this other placeholder text. Heck yeah. All right, we've got that done. That feels all right. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a main element. And then we want both of our P elements to be inside of main. So we want it to be the parent of both of these. I'm going to come all the way up here. And let's take a look at... And I hope I'm not too mean where I'm saying don't just use all divs. But it's so common to just use all divs. Uh, and you all aren't any old common web developers. You all are excellent web developers. So, which is way better than I. I'm, I'm, I'm faintly rubbish and I'm very chill about it. We've got our format here. So we know that we want it to say main. We want to have our paragraph. We want to have our paragraph. And we want it to close main. This is a bit... I was about to say it's a bit Pulp Fiction, and it occurred to me that that um, that movie reference is significantly older than most of you. I um, mm, mm, mm. So, <laughs> name, and you might notice here that this is indented. Somebody's pressed tab, and you don't have to do that, but. We're doing it because it makes it easier to see that this is the child of Maine. We know that that this exists within Maine. Ooh, is there ever more than one Maine on a page? We can look this up in a second. I think that you should absolutely not do it, both for accessibility and for common sense reasons. I think that you only really want one main element on a page, right? Maybe? Let's look. Do you know what? Here's what you get for asking a good question. So if I can ask you to, to go to DuckDuckDo or to go to Google or to Bing, can you look that up and see if you've got a good answer for us? I'm reasonably sure you shouldn't do it. <laughs> but we definitely want a better answer than Jess thinks you shouldn't do it. So the terrible technical explanation. <laughs> so we've got our main. We've come in and we've indented both of our paragraphs and we've only done that to make it easier for people to read. So here, when we look at our example, we've got main, we've got both of these indented in, and that's just to make it more human readable, your HTML. Um, and then come in here. So we're going to come all the way down and we're going to close our main. Oh, heck. And we're not going to indent this because that's our, our top level. Let's come down and let's see what we failed last time. Oh. oh, yeah. So the rest could be sections. So it could be section. It could be article. I think articles and sections would usually fall within main. 
Um, let's go ahead and let's have a little bit like, yeah, let me see if I can get somebody to talk to us about information art. Ooh, let's, let's, let's bring this question to Bruce on when, oh, tomorrow, no, next week. Um, this is a really good Bruce question. I think that sections should usually sit within main. So mains can be big old things and a section can sit in it, an article can sit in it, and a video can sit in it. Main's going to be most of the content in your website, I think, usually. Oh, uh, Sue, so look at you. I, Sue, so did you go and look at the spec? Did you go? And... All right. I'm not, I'm not going to pick favorite students, but um, I went to go. And the spec, this is such a good point. You say, well, Sue, what, what, what on earth is a spec? Jess, what is a spec? Uh, no, you're brilliant. This is perfect. So HTML has rules. Um, and HTML has an official sort of guide. People and, as a spoiler, we're going we're gonna to talk to some of the people who, who build the specs. There are, there's a thing called web standards. And I'll, I'll talk about this for just a second. We'll go back to our homework. It'll be fine. And you say, well, you know, we've got HTML5, like we've got an iPhone 12. Um, who builds HTML? Who decides what's going to go in HTML? And these are folks called, uh, so for, for HTML, a lot of this comes from the good people at W3C. Um, and if I can get one of my beloved assistants to drop in a link to W3C, this is the standards board. And if you watch Saturday morning cartoons, or if you watch like war movies, think about this as like the big oval table where the, the good guys or the bad guys, depending on your opinion, all meet to talk about the very important things that are happening with HTML. And these people make the decision, say, hey, we're going to write the spec. We're going to write the official sort of best practices. We're going to write the official how HTML works and how you should use it. Yeah. So another question, would main be similar to body then? I think that I would put main in body. So body, body, main. Um, but yeah, I think um, if this isn't a very strange thing for an old woman to say about web development, same kind of vibe. Um, my, and we can look that up in a second. I think that I would put, do you know what? Let's, let's check our homework here first. Hey, and now let's go to DuckDuckGo. Does main go inside body HTML? Hey, look at this. Earlier folks were talking about Stack Overflow. Look at this. Stack Overflow, they got me. Cool. Here we go. The content inside main should be unique to the document, shouldn't contain sidebars or navigation or your logos or stuff. So main is like the actual stuff people care about, whereas body is like the stuff people care about, but also your logo and also your copyright and also the nav bars. Cool. This was such a good question. I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the chat. And I really appreciate you asking this question. I would have just been like, oh, you know, I think that main sits inside a body. And that does seem to be true. Um, but main is going to be the actual good stuff, the stuff your users actually care about. Whereas body is like, all right, here's the stuff on the page. <laughs> Let's come all the way back. We just did this. We ran our tests. We got that beautiful. Oh, do you know what? This feels really, really disheartening to say, Jess, it just said 25%, 27%. Why is it saying four now? Um, and this may be, we had, um, was it, was it, who was it? Um, was somebody with a regal name? Was it queen or princess or somebody? Queen. Um, you said that you were having a, were you having a similar problem where, um, a free code camp isn't um, isn't recording your progress like this, but it is giving you a tick mark and moving you on to the next one. If this is the problem, oh hey Edwin, you're just joining us. You're not. You've not missed a thing. We're going nice and slow. So this is still saying we, we still haven't lost any of our progress, but I'm using an incognito window. 
I'm using an incognito window because I'm a privacy weirdo. Um, I'm using an incognito window just so that when I go to search on DuckDuckGo or when I go to search on Google to show you all something that you don't see all of my past searches or you don't see all of my old, my past searches aren't very scandalous, as mostly cat pictures. Um, but this means that the, the progress we've made so far isn't being saved just because we're using a, um, yeah. So Queens S had a similar problem. If you're using an incognito window, you might have the exact same problem we just ran into, which is cool. Free code camp is still tracking our progress. And if we come and if we look at, hang on. Oh, menu. If we come to the curriculum. Oh, come on, dad. Oh, heck. Oh, it's not giving us credit. Oh, do you, we might have the exact same problem. My loves, where were we going? Ah, this is the last one we did. Yes. But it it knows we it knows we finished this. Yeah, incognito window. This is because I'm using an incognito window. I'm not bothered if y'all aren't bothered. Um, but I'd rather have it say only four four percent and lose that serotonin than accidentally show y'all my past searches. <laughs> So we're going to add images to our website. I'm so excited about this uh, because so far we've got cat photo app, a pay tag, and a PTA. This is boring. This is not cute. This is not a good website. And this lets me talk a little bit more about websites as files. So we've talked about how when you write HTML. Oh, so here's a really good question. So when, can you... Can you do more than one main? Nah. So main should have all of your unique content in it and within the body. And that means your, the, yeah, your unique contact sets there. You shouldn't do more than one. And we just had someone who was absolutely lovely. Was it Sue? Um, thank you, Sue. Who looked up the spec for us and said, mm, don't, don't do more than one main. <laughs> yeah, the spec says one main. And you know what? I trust Sue. And I trust the spec. <laughs> So we've talked about how HTML files, when you put them up outside of a tutorial environment, are a bunch of documents. And images are similar. So if you find a weird image online, or if you saw, find a cool image uh, when, you're, when you're surfing on social media, you can right click or push if you're on your phone and save that image, save that file. And what we're doing when we add an image to a website is we're saying, hey, I know where an image is. Show me the image at this address. Yeah. Oh. So what we're going to do is we can add an image. Oh, cool. So you had the same pro issue with it losing your progress. Cool. This seems to be an established problem. Not on your phone. Don't use incognito windows. Um, and everything's fine. <laughs> we can go ahead and troubleshoot more of these in the forums if y'all if y'all like. So. We're going to, and I'm going to copy and paste this because this, so, this is sort of sideways. It's really difficult to see. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this up. Oh, heck. I'm going to put this up at the top just so we can see it really well. Oh, heck. That is so big. Wait, what, what is this? Let me, let me zoom out because I think this picture is very important. Okay. This picture was very important. This is a business cat. How incredibly important is this business cat? I'm going to zoom back in because I think it's probably more important for you to be able to see the code than this one. Like, let's, let's, let's at least center. Yeah. Very handsome business cat. So let's look at what the different aspects of this image element is. We talked earlier about how comments in HTML are like an irregular verb. So we know that for like a P tag or an H1 or an H2 or an H6, that we'll have an opening one. And then our, wait, hang on. Where am I? We'll have a, we'll have an opening tag, our content, and then a closing tag. Y'all like how I just forgot how to do hands. Um, but for comments, it's a different syntax just to be, just to be mean. 
uh, just to be a little regular. And here, it's a di- <laughs> Oh, oh, I would, I re- so I've been a freelancer for a long time. Like I like to, to work for myself. I would go and work for a chief cat officer any day of the week. Um, but an image element is also like an irregular verb. This isn't like normal elements. So well, I'm going to type this out. And if you all are following along, type this out as well, just to sort of get your muscle memory in. You say, opening bracket, IMG for image. And then here we're writing SRC. And this is already unusual because we've got two different, two different sort of inputs here, two different things we're saying. And we're saying, hey, I, wa- I want you to, I-, I want this to be an image element. Yeah? So here's an image tag. And here I'm saying SRC. Here's the source. Here's where this image lives. And I'm going to say the image source is equal to what's sitting inside these quotation marks. And I'm going to say this is a self-closing tag. And you're going to hear me talk about self-closing tags again and again. But that means we don't need that little slash. It means that as soon as I put this done, this element, once I put a, a an image URL in, it's done. It's done all by itself. Now, usually, if you're, and we're going to talk about hosting later on, but usually you'll have a web host or you'll host it yourself, but there's going to be a, hmm, what's the least weird way to explain this? Usually, your files for your website sit on a computer that you know. This could be your computer, your server that's serving these files to visitors for your website, or it could be a host, like a hosting company, a company that says, hey, give us the files for your website, and we're going to go ahead and serve those to your users. Here, we've done something a little bit rude and a little bit dangerous. Oh, Jesse, this is such a good question. I really appreciate it. Um, and you know what? Self-closing tags, bizarrely and troublingly, they don't need a slash at the end. And I'd love to give you a very well thought out reason like, oh, they decided not to do this because. And I'm sure if we went back to the W3C and demanded, oh, we should call them and be like, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't have just one person answering phones. Um, but you don't need this closing slash. Yeah. Um. It'll feel less weird the more of these you write. Yeah, it's a bit like learning French or a bit like learning English. Hey, (laughs) Teddy is suggesting this chaotic evil. Lawful neutral? Lawful evil. (laughs) Lawful good. (laughs) Um, But here... We're linking to someone else's image. And this is a practice called hot linking. And hot linking, to start off with, it's rude. So it means that you're asking someone else's server to do the work of serving this image to your website. Can you think of why hot linking to images? Can you think of why linking to a website, linking to an image on a website you don't own could be dangerous. If I had a picture on my website and you go to jessica.tech, there's there's no picture here, you can check. You go to jessica.tech slash cool dot jpg. What could be dangerous about you showing an image screen of jessica.tech slash cool jpg? Ooh, do you know? Um, and hang on just a second. I'm going to answer Anne's question while y'all y'all do. Annie says, "Well, well I mean, what do I want? What do I, what should I do if I want to place an image that doesn't have a source?" And this is a super good question. So you're going to have to put it online somewhere. This could be putting it on an image hosting site, but usually this is going to be you uploading it to your own host. And we're going to talk about this later in the course. It feels super weird right now, but it's going to feel less weird later. And I know that that's like what we tell our children, like, well, you know, you'll you'll understand when you're older, but you'll understand in the next couple of weeks. I promise it'll feel better. 
So why shouldn't we hotlink? You know, someone else is paying for the server to serve those images. And it's rude. You're asking them to pay money to serve your images. Also, that image could be copyrighted. It might even be illegal. Ooh, there could be a malicious link. It could be malicious. And privacy problem. If someone else's site goes down, it could break the images on your page. Dylan, this is exactly what I was looking for. If they move the image, or I think this is the most dangerous, change the image, it's going to break the link to your image. If you put jessica.tech slash cool jpg and you put it on your website, and I notice, ooh, I can take that down and break your image. Or I could upload a new image that's cool.jpg and it could be whatever I want. Your website would just automatically, the browse, because you said image screen, jessica.tech slash cool jpg, your browser, your user's browser, isn't going to check that that's the image you actually want. It's just going to say, oh, the source of this image is jessica.tech, cool jpg. I've gotten that. And, oh, it's just a picture of a bunch of goats or whatever kind of rude thing I might want to do. Yeah, it could be deleted. Jesse makes a really good point. You're using their bandwidth. That's heckin' rude. Uh, Christopher's got it perfect. You don't want all of your cat pictures to be dogs, do you? And, like, this is so gentle. Y'all trust the internet a lot more than me. Because, like, it could be way worse than dogs. But, like, let's let's leave it there. So we're so close to where, there, where, where the other class I used to be a classroom teacher and you could tell it's just, it's just me being rubbish. We are almost to where the other session is. So we'll, we'll get us there and feel real good about it. One thing that I want to stress, and we've already said that, hey, you can't just use all divs. Otherwise, I'll be very disappointed. Another thing is that you must. Am, am I allowed to just tell y'all what to do? Like, can I just be mean? feel like I can just be me. You must, whenever you do an image, I insist, I politely, accept, I gently suggest, I ask pretty please for you to include an alt attribute. And this alt attribute does a lot of things. So this is an alt attribute. It's just a short description of what the picture is. And this is useful for a whole bunch of different reasons. So when you use DuckDuckGo image search or Google image search, and you say, hey, I want a picture of a banana slug. And y'all should like look at banana slugs. They're so cool. I want a picture of a banana slug. What it's going to do is it's going to look. And a lot of what DuckDuckGo or a lot of what Google is going to rely on is like, hey, where's the alt text telling me that these are banana slugs? <laughs> so it's not just for search engines, but... You also want to add an alt text because people using assistive technologies still, like, and I'm, I'm going to frame this in terms of rights. The, when you're building something for the web, you're building it for anybody who might come and see it. If you're creating web experiences that aren't accessible, what you're effectively doing is saying, hey, I've built a website but there's a gate in front of it. Some of you can't come in. Some of you can't see this. And someone using a screen reader, so somebody using assistive technology who is having the website read to them, isn't necessarily going to be able to see your image. They still deserve, they still have the right to know what that image is, especially if it's important. So the exception is, if an image is purely decorative, so if you've got like a little scroll bar, yeah, <laughs> so you make a point. I say suggest, but the free code camp text says you must. <sighs> Technically, your image will work without an alt attribute, but it is a super double deluxe jerk move. Um, when I say suggest, it's because you all are adults and I'm not your boss and I'm not your mother and I can't make you. But if I was your boss, if I was your mother, I would definitely make you. If I was your boss or if I were your mother, like it would be weird if I was both, I would definitely make you. <laughs> so I say suggest just because I'm aware that I probably can't force you. 
yet. <laughs> so um, if, if you have an image on your webpage that's purely decorative, so a little scroll bar or like just a little spacer, or like a little gray square, you can go ahead and have an empty alt text. So alt equals quotation mark, nothing, quotation mark. Yeah, Dylan points this out. It's considered best practice, which is so much more formal than it will make me cry. <laughs> more technically correct as well. Um, so let's add an alt to our image example. So within the existing main, so we've got this main and main. So inside of here, we're going to create an image element before our two paragraphs. So y'all yell at me as I type this about how, how this looks. Ooh, and let's tab over. So IMD source is equal to, what are we going to, and we're going to set this to, and again, we're, we're hot linking to this. It's a, it's a, um, it's not best practice, but this is free code camp. I bet they're giving us something safe. And we're going to, we're going to go ahead and add to this image right here. But we've been told we must, 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 and I agree that we must, must, must have an alt. So the way the, the way we put in an alt is right after we finish the image source, right after we, the URL, the address of where this image sits, we want to say the alt, and here we go, alt is equal, oh heck, is equal to, and these quotation marks are, are, are where we set things. We're going to close that image tag. So right now, I've done something very, very bad. I've already told you, I insist, I suggest, I cajole that you must have good alt text when you have an image on your page. And we don't have good alt text. You've said, well, the exception is you can have empty alt text like this when it's a purely decorative image, when the image doesn't mean anything. But I think this image means something. I have already confessed that I'm super, super lazy. So I am going to ask all of you, please give me what kind of alt text I should put in here. What's a description of this picture? Tell me what I should type if I was trying to describe to someone what this is. And y'all notice that, who is a kitten? Is there anything else about it? Yes. Oh, Christopher, that's, <laughs> oh, heck, we're getting the wrong ones. So Christopher's asking, hey, is alt text really important for a screen reader? Absolutely. So it's important. Not, and we're focusing really on screen readers as the most obvious sort of assistive technologies. And it's not just screen readers. So it's really good for accessibility in general. This is such a good question. And we're definitely going to come back to this. I, Christopher, you were just a, did your teachers always fuss at how you are just a joy to have in class? So we've got so many good suggestions for alt text. We've got kit lying upside down, yeah? Picture of a cat. I like picture. I want a little more. There's not just a cat here. Tell me a little bit more. Kitten lying on its back. We've got an orange kitten lying on its back. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead, and I like this a lot. Unfortunately, I can't copy paste out of the, the, the thing I'm using, so I'm going to have to type this. Say, um, orange kitten lying on its, oh, is it's, there's no apostrophe in the possessive it's, is there? Well, I'm just going to move on and pre pretend that, that. So thank you for letting me steal this. Oh, we, other words. Yeah. So here's a really good question. Would it be good or bad to put alt text for decorative headers as well? I think it depends. So if your decorative header says something important, so if you like the, wait, 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 wait. So the one that says free code camp up at the top, I'd probably put alt text for that. And actually, is there? Oh, it doesn't look like there's alt text for that. Um, if it means something, if it conveys a meaning, if it's important for your user to know what that decorative image is, Sure. Yeah. Add some alt text. I love it. We've got orange kitten lying in. Oh, kitten chilling. Oh, look at this. I love this alt text. Kitten staring into your soul. That kitten is staring into my soul. 
I think all of you have given us fantastic alt text to work from. And hopefully I've appropriately threatened you that you must, must, must do alt text. Otherwise, I will get you and tie all of your shoelaces together. This says 7% complete, but that's a lie. We both know, we all know it's a lie. So this is going to be the last one we do today. And then we're going to do some question and answer and chill. It isn't showing us the appropriate percentage, but. Oh, here's a really good question. I wrote a picture of such and such. Do screen readers already tell people it's a picture so she, you shouldn't do this? I, I think that generally when a screen reader is looking at a, is describing a picture, it'll know that it's a picture. I might leave that off personally. Yeah. Oh, this is so helpful, Jesse. Jesse, you are a joy. Thank you. <laughs> Um, if you put empty alt text, screen readers know to ignore it. Otherwise, they'll just yell, image. And you don't need to know there's an image you can't, you, you don't know what it's about. So we're going to do this last one. And then we're going to chill out and do some question and answer. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. This is us about 30% of the way through the HTML module. But... In order to keep up with the boot camp, you're going to want to be about 50% of the way done with this by the end of the week-ish. There's no rules. There's no assignments. But, I mean, there, there are assignments, but you can do them when you want. I'd love to encourage you to have more than 50% of this done, 50% of this, this, this section done before the next stream. That way you'll be a little bit ahead of us or a lot ahead of us if you're very keen. And you'll be able to really, really help out and really review. We're not going to be covering all of these all together. So yeah, do, do make sure that you're doing these in your own time as well so you don't get left behind. This is my favorite thing. This is my favorite thing because I get to make a weird sound while I describe links. We talked about how websites and we'll, we'll we'll distinguish between websites and web pages a little more later because like woof that gets complicated um but that the web is just a bunch of documents that are connected to each other how useful oh we've got a really good question about images how do i know which pictures are safe to use from the internet when i'm building my own website the the pictures that are safe to use on the internet when you are building your own website are going to be ones that you host yourself. Um, of course, you want to make sure that you're using ones that have a license that allows you to use them or and that you're you're appropriately citing that. But yeah, if you're hot linking, if you're linking to uh, an image someone else is hosting, it can always be dangerous. You don't need any danger in your life. Yeah. Sammy says, take your own pictures, buy them. Um, I would really like to flag as well that there's a whole... Uh, community, there's a whole big thing of um, permissive, permissively licensed photos from permissively licensed content. Um, there's a whole movement, the Creative Commons movement. Um, I'm going to, again, absolutely lovingly bully my, my, my lovely colleagues to say, hey, can y'all can y'all link to um, Creative Commons while I while I explain what anchors are? So we're going to talk about links and links are ways that you can take a document on the web and another document on the web and have them point at each other or have a document on the web. Wait, hang on, heck, heck, heck. Have a document on the web that points to another document on the web. How cool and weird. Um, and we're going to do this by using anchor elements. And I know that a bunch of people are, um, I know that folks are, um, based all over the world and folks have different first languages. When I say anchor, this can feel super weird. Let me go ahead and get the emoji for what I mean. It's always, it's always bad when, when, a, when somebody's giving you a technical explanation and they say, oh, hang on, I need to get this emoji. When I talk about an anchor, I'm talking about this big old metal thing that a boat uses to stay stuck. <sighs> And I like to talk about an, an anchor element is the element we're going to use to do links. 
But I also like to think about it as an anchor because it makes it really easy to remember the syntax for this. So the syntax for doing a link, let's, look, hang on, let me up here, outside of my main scandalous, scandalous. Um, so we're going to say this is an anchor element, A for anchor. And then here's a hypertext, oh, no, <laughs> hypertext, like HTML, hypertext markup language. Here's a hypertext, an H, reference, ref. But you're not going to remember this. Well, like, oh, hypertext ref. Who's going to remember that? No one's going to remember that. I want you to think of an anchor for a boat with a big, heavy chain. And when you link to another website, and we'll, we'll talk about this next week, or when you link about to different pages on your website, or when you link to different sections on the same page, because all of these are possible. We'll talk, we'll talk about them tomorrow. I want you to think about picking up this big anchor and throwing it at this other place. Say, oh, okay, I'm building this website about cats, but I want to link to example.com. I'm going to pick up my anchor element, my A, and I'm going to ref it. And here, ref doesn't mean it. Ref, ref is just the sound you would make if you tried to throw an anchor. Ref. So I'm going to pick up my anchor. I'm going to throw it. Ref. Oh, heck. Hypertext reference indeed. So this is what it really means. <laughs> But I'm going to ask that you remember it with picking up an anchor and making this sound of amazing effort rough, and throwing it at the other website. The anchor lands on the other website. And then there's a, a chain that connects it to your website. And when people come to your website and they say, okay, come into your website, come into your website. <gasps> Here's a link. Oh, there's a chain attached to this link. Oh. The anchor for this chain is on this target web page. Nice. <laughs> so, and just like we learned with images, the hypertext reference is equal to what's going to sit inside of these quotation marks. And then... So we learned that images are self-closing tags. This looks a little bit like an image, right? Do you know what? Late, earlier on, I was like, oh, no, HTML is lawful. good." Maybe it is lawful evil. Because even though this looks a lot like an image, it's, it's, it's not self-closing. <laughs> We're going to need to close this. And because this is the tag... And this is the reference. We only need to say, hey, I'm closing my anchor tag. I'm done with this anchor. I'm not messing about with this anchor anymore. And then, so this is an empty link. There's no content yet. We need to have two things to make this link work. We need to have a URL. We need to have an address. And later on, we'll talk about domain names and URLs. And But a URL is stuff, that, generally, stuff that looks like this. Yeah. And here, I'm going to say HTTPS. Back in the day, you could say HTTP. HTTPS is a lot more common these days. It's a more secure way to connect to websites. And here, I'm going to say example. Oh, heck, heck, heck. I'm actually going to slash, slash. <laughs> Example.com. You say, yeah, but... Jess, I mean, it doesn't show up. This this link doesn't do anything. You you're you're terrible. You're terrible at this. And I mean, I am terrible at this. Fair, but I also told us that we needed two different things. We needed where this link was going, but we also need something to display. So here, what sits inside these two links? Here's the opening tag and the closing tag. What sits in here? It's going to way. It's going to be what's shown to the user. And here, um, in in this setting, we're doing a we're we're text. So we're going to talk about this as the anchor text. I like it. Still on anchors. That this is the text 
that will display when someone comes and finds our anchor. But it doesn't, just to preview it, it doesn't have to be text. You can use an image to link. You can use video to link. And somebody asked in the last session, can you link to the background? And do you know what? That question was so good that it gave me existential dread. Um, I don't think so. And I had a mess about, and I, I was not able to do that, to, to easily link to a background image. But if y'all can, yeah, if you all, if anybody can find a way to link to a background image using semantic HTML, come back and see me. I'll, I, I'll send you a sticker. I don't have stickers. I'll, I'll find some stickers. We should get some stickers made for the boot camp. Mm -mm -mm. Stop, 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 Jess. So here's our example link. <laughs> oh, is using double quotations best practice over single quotations or does it matter? It's a good question, Jonathan. So I always use double. And I know that it will break stuff if there's a variation. So if I say, here's a single, oh heck, here's a single quote and here's a double quote. That doesn't work. That look, look, everything's red. It's like, nope, this is broken. I think as long as you're consistent. So as long as you have two double quotes or two single quotes, that's fine. I mean, it's technically correct. Most folks I see, and I think best practice is to use double quotes just to keep it consistent. So I think, and I'm wrong a lot. You should definitely double check on me. I think that using single quotes won't, will technically work. And who doesn't love something that technically works? Um, but the double quotes are sort of best practice here. Yeah. So you can do this. I won't stop you. But it's probably best to go ahead and use double quotes just because all the other cool kids are using them. I'm going to get rid of our example link. And we're going to do our homework. I'm going to go ahead and finish this last assignment. I'm going to hang out and answer some questions with y'all. And then, even though I absolutely love talking to you. I'm going to take a nap. So, okay. It just says to make a, an anchor element that links to free cat photo app and has cat photos as our anchor text. So between the opening and closing tags, we want cat photos to be what's displayed to the users. It doesn't say where though. So, it still doesn't care where we want to do it. Where do we want to put this? I'm going to put it under the picture just because I, I don't want to mess with this picture. So we're going to opening tag A. Let, let's, let's do this on another line. Yeah. And let's indent this. Oh, heck. So this is sitting within our main element because it's part of the unique content. A. And what's that sound we make when we throw an anchor? Ruff. Ooh, heck. The hypertext reference is equal to, well, let's go ahead and get this, HTTPS, which is the more secure way to connect to a website, freecatphotoapp.com. Yeah. We're going to close that opening tag. And here, our anchor text, what's going to be displayed when people discover our anchors is cat photos. Now we're going to, so at the moment, look at this. Everything is blue. Everything is super heckin' blue. It's just, this is too much link. So we're going to close our anchor and it's just cat photos. This is manageable. We can do this. Oh, this is such a good point. So say, hey, if you're going to have quotes within a piece of, like, quotes within quotes, so the example here is if you're doing alt text and you are so helpful, you just go way out of your way, my love, um, then you're going to want double quotations outside it and then single quotations. Oh, wait. <sighs> single quotes outside and then double quotes inside. I think you can reverse those as well and do double quotes outside and single quotes inside, but you need to alternate those to make them actually work. Whew, whew. Sorry, that's exhausting. Uh, not, not you all, just me trying to keep my, my fragile human brain together. This says cat photos. I think this is going to say run all tests and we are going to be blissfully, completely at peace. Ah, 
fantastic. This says 11%. We know we're like 40%. We know. We just know. Um, but let's go ahead and leave that there today. Let's take a little bit of time and answer any questions that folks might have. Do y'all have anything that I can go ahead and answer for you before? Again, I hate to belabor the point, but as an old lady, before I go and take an old lady nap. If you come back, so if you've got any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We'll be really, really happy to, to take a look at them with you. If you come on back tomorrow, and the times will all be on the events page, but tomorrow's session will be starting actually about the time it is now. <laughs> oh, this is sad. Uh, so tomorrow we'll have Barbara Oakley and Zach Casares joining us. So this is a really good question. Where should I start my own pictures if I'd like to use a source? So you can either, so generally speaking, you're going to be using a hosting company. So say, hey, I want to pay someone or I want to find a free someone um, to upload my picture and make it available. Um, it's a little bit complex to talk about, but we're going to go ahead and I'll get somebody to come and talk to us about hosting in a bit of more of a complete way. Ooh, somebody's given me a pro tip. Hey, if you want to indent your elements within Maine, and I, I love this because the subtext is you should probably indent your elements within Maine. You can highlight the elements you want to indent and then control plus, uh, control plus bracket or control plus other bracket. Um, fantastic point. Cool. Same as before, but how does HTML recognize one space but ignores if we add more spaces than that? I think the convention is that HTML assumes that you only wanted one space. If you wanted more than that, if I wanted a bunch of spaces, are, are you suggesting in the middle of text or are you suggesting to space text out? Um, I think I'd have different recommendations. So if you say, hey, I want these paragraphs to be further apart, I might, I probably might use do that using CSS or I might do that. I'd almost definitely do that using CSS. You say, well, you know what? I'm doing something with um, a paragraph where having multiple spaces in a row is important to the text. I'd probably go ahead and use multiple escape spaces then. Which was that ampersign N S B. I've forgotten it already. So we've got a really fantastic question. So tomorrow we are not going to continue work on a different session. Tomorrow we're going to have a guest speaker talking to us about how to learn and how to structure your learning. The rest of this week, you all are going to be working from freecodecamp.org on your own. Um, I'll be in the forums if you need me. But you all are going to go ahead and see how much progress you can make on your own. And then we're going to come back next week. So this is a part-time boot camp. It's really chill. You I was going to say you only need to make one stream per week, but you don't even have to come to the streams if you want. Everything's chill. All of the guest sessions are going to be held Wednesdays, but to make things more fair, because we've got learners from all around the world, to make things more fair and to make things more chaotic, um, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm excited that all of our guest sessions are going to be at very, very different times. And that means that somebody based in South America or North America um, is going to be able to watch some of them after work and it's going to be very convenient. Um, or uh, some of, and for th those might be in the middle of the night for, for those of us in Europe. And some of them could be very, very late in, in, uh, in the US or very, very early in the morning. So I'm so sorry that the, the sessions on Wednesdays will be at different times. Um, fabulous. I will again entreat my beloved colleagues. Can you throw us a link to the Discord? The Discord is going to be behind the bootcamp sign up, which you're so welcome to do. Catherine, my beloved. Sorry, that's very familiar of me. Um, some of the folks in here have studied web development before. Um, this course is designed for it to take you from the very, very beginning. Never, ever feel like you don't belong here. If I'm going too fast or... I mean, this is very likely if I start talking about absolutely nonsense, like, oh, you know, the philosophy behind this. Just have a fuss at me. I'm always happy to slow down. I'm always happy to repeat stuff. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> this, is, this course was designed for folks who have no experience with development and no experience with web development. 
honestly, I'd be grumpy if we scared you off. Ooh, ah, love this question. I love this question. You say, Jess, and, and you're, you're asking this in a very cool way. If HTML and CSS are enough to build a website, why does JavaScript exist? This is a little controversial because I would lovingly, and I would gently argue, a lot of times where we use JavaScript on the web, we don't really need to. Um, JavaScript adds an extra layer of interactivity to HTML and CSS, but um, yeah, it's, it's not always necessary. It's really, really important for things like building web apps. Um, is the Discord official? Um, I'm so sorry it's not. So I'm, um, they, there's uh, somebody started one in the forum. Um, I will go ahead and say that that's not being run by the team. That's not being officially moderated. Um, I really would like to start an official Discord once the course is underway. Um, but I'm such a mean old lady about moderation. I want to make sure that we understand the moderation needs of the course and that we can, that, that if and when we we want to go for a group chat kind of thing, that it's something where we can keep, um, yeah, where we can keep it feeling really safe and really well paced. So I believe there is a Discord that's been posted in the forums, but it's it's not official and I, I take no responsibility. Oh, Jesse, look at you answering the questions I really like. So You've got the question again, if HTML and CSS are enough to build a website, why JavaScript? And you say, okay, HTML, this is the stuff. It's the content. It's what, it's what you're putting up there. CSS, the style. Whereas the JavaScript is like the action. Yeah? <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. JavaScript is where users can interact. Oh, yep. So <laughs> I'm so sorry that even though you were all delightful and I would joyously take up all your time forever. Oh, Jolene. I'm so jealous of being named Jolene. What a beautiful name. And points out that JavaScript's adding this user interactivity. So I absolutely adore you all. I hate to cut you off, but I am super wiped out. I'm going to be joining you again next week at this exact same time to go over some more lessons. But if some of you want to join us tomorrow for the guest speaker, I'd be really excited. All of this is about helping you learn and helping you better support. I really want to stress that you never have to show up to the live sessions if you don't want to. There's always going to be a video after the fact. And if you have any feedback about how we can make this better for you, please, please fuss at me. Y'all going to be all right? So back to being mean. Er, your homework. If you could, if you could please, pretty please, try and get at least halfway through the HTML. Yeah, where can you practice the materials already covered beyond the sessions? Um, go ahead and head to freecodecamp.org. That's going to be the best way to do that. All of the lesson material is here. It's all going to be super chill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, you all have been absolutely fantastic. I'm going to let you go. Please have the easiest afternoon, morning or afternoon or middle of the night. Bye loves. <laughs>